Good evening. My name is Josh Altman, and I'm the student president of the William F. Buckley Jr. Program. I'd like to thank you all for your attendance tonight and for your generous support of the second annual Disinvitation Dinner. Also, I think we owe, all owe a round of applause to Laura Noble, without whom there would be no dinner tonight. So, I don't know about you, but I'm not sure how I feel about the title, Second Annual Disinvitation Dinner. On the one hand, it means that our event last spring with George Will was a great success. On the other hand, it means that disinvitation, which seems to be the operative word here tonight, is still a thing that's going on, which for us free speech activists is a bit unsettling. In either case, part of the formula, it seems, is to host the event outside of the spitball radius of protesters in New Haven, <laughs> And instead, we've opted for an amazing venue here in New York, where we have no threat of being disinvited ourselves. And as a New Yorker, I can say, this really speaks to how great New York values are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm incredibly grateful for having found the William F. Buckley Jr. program when I was a freshman. And since joining, I've been able to take advantage of the incredible speaker series and firing line debates, which have certainly made me rethink my views on many issues. It has been an invaluable supplement to my Yale education, and it has taught me the importance of free speech as a baseline for the important questions that we face today. And several weeks ago, I had an experience uh, to reflect on the importance of free speech when I went to Moscow to conduct research on US-Russian relations. And as many of you know and could probably guess, the freedoms that we love and cherish in the US are not quite held in the same regard in Putin's Russia. And in fact, this is a fun fact, the expression freedom of speech doesn't actually translate into Russian. The roughest translation you can get is freedom of word. Yes, word the singular. And to, to get a better sense of how Russians made this difficult choice of choosing which word they think can capture all of their sentiments, I thought it would be a fun and totally safe idea to meet with the leader of the Russian opposition. And when I did, he asked me with wide eyes what it is like to study at a stellar university where there's principal debate without fear of repercussions for your views, <laughs> where students are not cornered into a groupthink as they are in Russia, and where dissent is encouraged. I then shrugged. And I told him that if I ever find such a university, I'd be sure to get back to him. <laughs> well, to be completely honest, all is not so rotten in the state of New Haven. The growth of the Buckley program over the past five years certainly speaks to that fact. And as Lauren mentioned, the Buckley program now boasts 175 student fellows. And to give you a sense of what effect the November protests truly had, since the protests began, we received 30 new applications for fellows. We have clearly struck a chord with students on campus, and I do not think it is premature to say that the pendulum is slowly swinging back towards sanity. And the Buckley program has pushed the conversation also beyond free speech and brought us back to fascinating questions of political philosophy, ethics, and public policy. But there's still much more work to be done. And one noticeable problem on Yale's campus is the atmosphere of subdued hostility. While the little tyrants, by which I mean the self-appointed leaders of the protests, have so graciously allowed for different perspectives to make their way onto campus, it would be a stretch to say that these students are willing to meaningfully engage with other students who hold different views from their own. And I fear that many at Yale are, being, are very afraid of being called the C word. Yes, the C word, conservative. <laughs> Professors and students alike cower at the prospect, taking pains to appease the little tyrants. And just to cite one example, I recently had a professor who apologized for using gendered pronouns in our discussion of Aristotle's politics, because according to her, Aristotle was not being sensitive to women's humanity whenever he used men as examples in his political theory. And while this case is certainly laughable, I do think this incident speaks to the regrettable circumstances the Buckley program faces on Yale's campus. Many on the left have conceded that free speech is and will continue to be a winning issue. But their weapons have progressed with the times. And instead of calling for disinvitation, they employ tactics to avoid and to limit the campus's exposure to different views on campus and views on the world. The Buckley program recognizes the danger of this phenomenon 
and the danger it poses to the goals of a liberal arts education. But I can promise you that the William F. Buckley Jr. program won't stop in its fight against such closed-mindedness, hostility, and disinvitation. Thank you, and please enjoy the rest of your evening.